this has been a part of the build that I've been excited about, concerned about, um, not slightly outside my comfort zone, if you like. I've never actually worked with Core 10 before. I've done lots of welding, done lots of steel detailing, but to actually get some some Core 10 shipped down from Scotland, uh, where most of it comes in from, and actually start making up the first sample panel for the heads of the windows has been really great. This went on uh, week before last. Uh, the materials all came down on a pallet, pre-cut, and then we welded together, uh, working with Gary, we welded up this sample panel, which actually went so smoothly, it was uh, hugely uh, reassuring. There were concerns around the, the stiffness, the springiness of the Core 10 and whether we could fold it and bend it, which we could with the brake press that we've got. And there were concerns about how it would sort of fit onto the wall with the fixing method that I've devised using bits of timber and then bolting. To be honest with you, it couldn't have gone any smoother, apart from having to trim back a couple of edges. I'm really, I'm really so, so pleased with the way that it, it looks. I mean, it's meant to be very industrial. The whole idea of Core 10 as a material is it's actually an alloy, a mild steel alloy. And what it does is it rusts, it creates a rusted layer on the surface, which is what normal steel does. But the difference is, is that once normal steel has created a rust layer, it starts to break off from the surface of the material, exposing new uncorroded steel, which then gets corroded and breaks off. So it slowly gets eaten through. With the, the makeup and the cocktail and mix of metals in the core 10, once it's created that surface layer of um, rust, it doesn't flake, it doesn't expand and flake. So it affects, is, it's a self weathering. The, the, the oxide layer becomes a protective coating and you just get left with a rusty metal finish, which is what we're, what we're after. There will be, uh, these panels will be all the way above all of the windows. They will be on top of the cladding in through the courtyard and on the two ends of the building. There'll be timber underneath. And then there'll be a core 10 cap over the whole top of the parapet, which will be tack welded and sit all the way around the edge of the building. And finally, there will be core 10 growing beds on the roof and a detail around the stairs down. So there's a lot of core 10. I think it's about three tons of core 10 was delivered the other day to the fabricators. So big moment, all happening though. What, what I really like about this detail is that it is kind of hard and quite industrial, but it, it, it's really about the area that we're in. So for example, you've got the railway bridge over there, which would have had a viaduct, you know, a rail, steel metal rail bridge over the top. That's what this is kind of referencing. And also the iron stone, you know, you can see the rust, the veins of iron all running through the stone and this will, you know, be a rusty part. And, and it's just about a conversation between, you know, the geology, the rocks of this area and, and the expression of the building. I think that for me is when architecture is really kind of poetic, if you like.